Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. Gerald's. We are so glad you're here to worship with us. We welcome all of our guests and visitors and those joining us via live stream. During Lent, we'll be using the Latin chant mass beginning on page 860 in the Breaking Bread book. We'll be using the readings for Palm Sunday found on page 91 in the Breaking Bread book. Please rise and greet those around you. Presiding is Father Connect, assisted by Deacon Fred. Please face the back of the church. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Dear brethren, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today, we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal mystery, that is to say, of his passion and resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that, being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and in his life. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When Jesus and his disciples drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethany, and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately on entering it, you will find a colt tethered on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone should say to you, What are you doing? Why are you doing this? Reply, The master has need of it, and will send it back here at once. So they went off and found the colt tethered at a gate on the street, and they untied it. Some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They answered them, just as Jesus had told them, and they permitted them to do it. So they brought the colt to Jesus and put their cloaks over it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut from the fields. Those preceding him, as well as those following, kept crying out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David, that is to come. Hosanna in the highest. The Gospel of the Lord.
pray. Almighty ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. At this time, we invite any children who are four years old, all the way through first grade, to come to the front of the altar, where they will be led to the multi-purpose room to hear and pray with the scriptures. Any children... Four years old to first grade. Come on forward. My dear children, you will now go to hear God's word and reflect on the wonderful things God has done for us. Although maybe in a very unexpecting way, especially today, as now we're going to hear of Jesus' passion. And we will await for your return so that together we may celebrate the Eucharist. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear. I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him, and bestowed on him the name, which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. The Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread were to take place in two days' time. 
So the chief priests and the scribes were seeking a way to arrest him by treachery and put him to death. They said, When he was in Bethany reclining at table in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar of perfumed oil, costly, genuine spikenard. She broke the alabaster jar and poured it on his head. There were some who were indignant. Why have you been in this waste of perfumed oil? It could have been sold for more than 300 days' wages, and the money given to the poor. They were infuriated with her. Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you make trouble for her? She has done a good thing for me. The poor you will always have with you, and whenever you wish, you can do good to them. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anticipated anointing my body for burial. Amen, I say to you, wherever the gospel is proclaimed to the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went off to the chief priest to hand him over to them. When they heard him, they were pleased and promised to pay him money. Then he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man will meet you carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, The teacher says, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large upper room furnished and ready. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples went off, entered the city, and found it just as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he came with the twelve. And as they reclined at table and were eating, Jesus said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me. One who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and say to him one by one, Surely it is not I. He said to them, One of the twelve, the one who dips with me into the dish. For the Son of Man indeed goes, as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. While they were eating, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, And gave it to them and said, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you, I shall not drink again the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, All of you will have your faith shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all should have their faith shaken, mine will not be. Then Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, this very night before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he vehemently replied, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And they all spoke similarly. Then they came to a place named Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter, James, and John, and began to be troubled and distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and keep watch. He advanced a little and fell to the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass him. He said, Abba, Father, all things are possible to you. Take this cup away from me, but not what I will, but what you will. When he returned, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. 
Withdrawing again, he prayed, saying the same thing. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open and did not know what to answer him. He returned a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up. Let's go. My betrayer is at hand. Then, while he was sleeping, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a crowd with swords and clubs who had come from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. His betrayer had arranged a signal with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him and lead him away securely. He came and immediately went over to him and said, Rabbi. And he kissed him. At this they laid hands on him and arrested him. One of the bystanders drew his sword, struck the high priest's servant, and cut off his ear. Jesus said to them in reply, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day I was with you teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me, but that the scriptures may be fulfilled. And they all left him and fled. Now a young man followed him wearing nothing but a linen cloth about his body. They seized him, but he left the cloth behind and ran off naked. They led Jesus away to the high priest, and all the chief priests and elders and the scribes came together. Peter followed him at a distance into the high priest's courtyard and was seated with the guards, warming himself at the fire. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none. Many gave false witness against him, but their testimony did not agree. Some took the stand and testified falsely against him, alleging, Even so, their testimony did not agree. The high priest rose before the assembly and questioned Jesus, saying, Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But he was silent and answered nothing. Again, the high priest asked him and said to him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? Then Jesus answered, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. At that, the high priest tore his garments and said, What further need have we of witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him as deserving to die. Some began to spit on him. They blindfolded him and struck him and said to him, And the guards greeted him with blows. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the high priest's maids came along. Seeing Peter warming himself, she looked intently at him and said, But he denied it, saying, I neither know or understand what you are talking about. So he went out into the outer court. Then the cook, the cock crowed. The maid saw him and began again to say to the bystanders. Once again, he denied it. A little later, the bystanders said to Peter once more. He began to curse and to swear. I do not know this man about whom you are talking. And immediately a cock crowed a second time. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. He broke down and wept. As soon as morning came, the chief priests with the elders and the scribes, that is, the whole Sanhedrin, held a council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply, You say so. The chief priests accused him of many things. Again, Pilate questioned him. Have you no answer? See how many things they accuse you of? Jesus gave him no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, he used to release to them one prisoner whom they requested. A man called Barabbas was then in prison along with the rebels who had committed murder in a rebellion. The crowd came forward and began to ask him to do for them as he was accustomed. Pilate answered, 
Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? For he knew that it was out of envy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Rabbis for them instead. Pilate again said to them in reply, Then what do you want me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted again. Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them, and after he had Jesus scourged, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is, the praetorium, and assembled the whole court cohort. They clothed him in purple, and weaving a crown of thorns, placed it on him. They began to salute him with, and kept striking his head with the reed and spitting upon him. They knelt before him in homage. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him out to crucify him. They pressed into service a passerby, Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. They brought him to the place of Golgotha, which is translated place of the skull. They gave him wine drugged with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his garments by casting lots for them to see what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. With him they crucified two revolutionaries, one on his right and one on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes mocked him among themselves and said, Those who were crucified with him also kept abusing him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani, which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, One of them rang, ran, soaked a sponge with wine, and put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to take him down. Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. The veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. When the centurion, who stood facing him, saw how he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of the younger James, and of Joseph, and of Solom. These women had followed him when he was in Galilee and ministered to him. There were also many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When it was already evening, since it was the day of preparation, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a distinguished member of the council, who was himself awaiting the kingdom of God, came and courageously went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was amazed that he was already dead. He summoned the centurion and asked him if Jesus had already died. And when he learned of it from the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. Having brought a linen cloth, he took him down, wrapped him in the linen cloth, and laid him in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. Then he rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of Joseph watched 
where he was laid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. What just happened? We started off all excited being here. Some of you may be even excited for the rain this morning because we know the ground needs it. Coming in here knowing it's Palm Sunday. We get palms. We get to take something home. I can fidget with something now during the homily. And we know that we're, we're participating in Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem. Jesus who's going to fulfill the prophecies that the Messiah is going to come in riding on a donkey. And people are so excited. They're proclaiming Hosanna, which means give us salvation. What are they being, what are they desiring to be saved from? As our own ground is desiring to be saved from the the dryness, it's thirsting for this rain. What are God's people thirsting for, desiring to be saved from? Back then, they were seeking to be saved from the oppression of the Romans. The oppression of just a very difficult life. But all of us, throughout all time, we're all thirsting to be saved from our sin. To be saved from evil. And so we celebrate because here comes God who became man to conquer sin, to set us free. And just a few days later, or for us, just a few minutes later, what happened? Jesus is now on the cross. Dead taken down from the cross, put in a tomb. What do you think Mary, his mother, was thinking? What happened? Now, I'm not saying she she wasn't aware. Instead, it's she knew what was coming and she couldn't stop it. And even in the midst of the great joys Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem, just a few days later, it's still, how quickly it got so bad. I'd like, to, I'd like to tell you a story about Julie. It's the name of my mom, but this has nothing to do with my mom. It's just a story I made up. Julie is married. Her husband is uh, deployed. She's at home raising two of her kids. She's got, she's got a young daughter, the oldest, who's five years old, very bright, one who, who likes to kind of be everywhere and wants to, to help out. If, if something seems to be out of place, she's going to put it in place. If her younger brother, who is three, uh, is playing with stuffed animals or whatever and the stuffed animal falls over, she runs over and sets it back up. She's observant and helpful. Her younger brother, three years old, like I said, also very observant, doesn't say much at all. Very few words has he ever uttered. Kind of an odd character, and yet very observant. So some of the adults are kind of worried about him, worried about his, worried for his parents, not quite sure what to think. And, and the two... Maybe because the older daughter is always like in everyone's space. The two don't always get along. Julie then needs a reprieve. They live in a small town, but this small town's got a petting zoo. Let's let's go to the petting zoo. Let's go just get them outside and and it was just a good day. Seeing her younger son interact with the animals. 
And again, his observances, right? And so her watching him, like certain things clicking for him, seeing a great smile as uh, some of the animals eat from his eat from his hand, just his little three-year-old hand. Him and his sister are getting along really, really well. It's just a good day. And they come home in time for lunch. And she goes inside to, to make lunch. And the kids are just playing nicely in the dirt out in the front yard. Uh, her boy doesn't say much, but all of a sudden she hears him sounding like one of the animals at the petting zoo. Now they're playing zoo. And so she's preparing lunch, and then she hears the screech of tires and a thump, and her heart sinks. And she runs outside and sees the worst scene ever, her boy lying under a car. And the driver getting out, running around, Mom, Julie just runs forward. Sister nowhere to be found until Mom starts running. Then Sister's little five-year-old legs catching right up there next to Mom because she knows something is wrong. And they get out, and she picks up her boy just beside herself. What just happened? We're having such a good day. This couldn't have happened. And her daughter, again, very observant, wants to be able to fix things, can't sit, sit her brother upright, but knows how to call 911. So stands up and bolts back to the house. Roger is on his way to a lunch meeting. Not in a hurry, but it's a very important lunch meeting. And he sees ahead the accident. And again, his gut, his heart sinks into his gut, and his gut just sinks even further. But you know he can't stop. There's nothing he can do. The driver is out, and they're, they're working on stuff. He's, also, he's already on the phone with, with 911. And so he's not in a hurry, but he takes his foot off of the gas, rests it off to the right side. And as he's passing the car, that's when the daughter runs out. And her face hits the headlights. And by the time he's able to, Roger's able to react and bring his foot from the resting position to the brakes and press the brakes, the tire's already over her. And her mom sees it all. What just happened? Overwhelmed with grief and shock, she faints. She's out. She wakes up in a hospital, kind of confused, groggy, trying to get her bearings. Where am I? And she starts to remember, oh, today was a good day. Remembers the sound of her son making animal noises and then instantly sees her son in her arms, the memory. What happened? Oh, and then the, the image of her daughter. How am I going to tell their dad? Why would this happen? And that's never a good question in times of tragedy. Instead, what we need to ask is, where, God, are you? Because God sent his son, Jesus, not to explain away the suffering, but to enter into it. Where, God, are you? I'm right here suffering with you. I know what it's like. I saw it coming. And I, like you need to do too, go through it. We can't ignore it. 
We can't push it aside. We can't give up. We're going to go through it together. I am with you. And you are not strong enough. I am the one who will conquer the suffering, who will conquer the death, who will rise again. And you, if you remain with me through this, you will be resurrected as well. Stay with me. Whatever it is you've experienced throughout life, the joys and the uncontrolled sufferings, corporate layoffs, having to move to a different state which might as well seem like a different country, teenager gets pregnant, finds out kind of late in the pregnancy, and then just a couple weeks later after that, still trying to adjust to what life's going to be like, experiences severe pains and finds out she miscarries, now has to go through another change. The things that we sometimes see coming and sometimes don't see coming, and it just keeps getting worse, What do we do with that? We lean into God. We don't ask why. We ask, where are you? Because God did not come to explain away the suffering. He came to enter into it and to conquer it. That doesn't mean we won't go through it. That's not what conquering means. I mean, yeah, yeah. it means that we get to go through it. And with God, come out on the other end, truly alive. This doesn't fully happen until heaven, which means we can't give up. Mary, the Blessed Mother, standing at the foot of the cross, asking what just happened, did not give up. was there with the apostles, praying with them as they all came back from their state of fleeing. And they all, because they came back, got to encounter the risen Lord, truly triumphant, allowing us to stop clinging to the passing things, no matter how good they are, no matter who they are, and cling only to Jesus, who has come to set us free. I believe in one God, the Father Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. 
who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As Jesus enters victoriously into Jerusalem to do his Father's will, we turn to the Father, united with our crucified Savior. that the suffering and death of Jesus will strengthen the church in holiness and give her new growth, we pray to the Lord. For those who are to be baptized and received into the church at the Easter Vigil, that these final days of preparation will be a time of transforming grace, we pray to the Lord. That civil authorities will use their power to protect the poor, oppose injustice, preserve religious freedom, and promote lasting peace, we pray to the Lord. That Christians everywhere will live this Holy Week with special reverence, self-giving, and devotion, we pray to the Lord. For the current and future seminarians from this parish, and all seminarians, that they may continue to be guided by God in their discernment to the priesthood, we pray to the Lord. For the grace this week to offer our own sufferings in union with Christ, trusting that he will use them to sanctify us and others, we pray to the Lord. For those who have died, Janice Kibors, and especially for the unborn, we pray to the Lord. For our Mass intention this morning, Bob and Helen Weber and Leon Fiddler, and for all of the intentions that we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Merciful Father, by the holy cross of Christ, your Son has redeemed the world. Help us to take up his cross and to be united to Jesus in his passion with Mary, his mother. For Jesus is our Lord now and forever. Amen. Yeah. 
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Bless God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that... Though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord. Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration, we acclaim... Holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium Fidei.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and George, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you so much for worshiping with us today. I do hope you have a holy, holy week. In the Archdiocese of Omaha, the Chrism Mass isn't on Holy Thursday. It normally is elsewhere uh, because we've got such an expansive diocese. We uh, have it on Monday at the cathedral. All the priests come and they receive the new oils blessed by the Archbishop at the, the Holy Mass, the Chrism Mass. So there'll be no Mass here on tomorrow, Monday, but you are uh, welcome to join us at the cathedral, 11 a.m. for the Chrism Mass. A powerful way to experience the fullness of Easter is to have received God's forgiveness through the sacrament of confession. We are offering last chance confessions this week, tonight through Tuesday from 6.30 to 7.30. The doors will lock at 7.30. I mean, if, you're, if you get in before then, we'll, we'll stay and, and hear you out, but you got to get in before the doors lock. Also, perfectly consider the Triduum services, Holy Thursday, Good Friday service, and then the Easter Vigil. The greatest, the most unique uh, liturgies in the church year, in the liturgical year. The most holy days of the year because of what God has fulfilled for us. Now, our Good Friday Stations of the Cross are going to be done a little bit differently this year. They will be held at noon on Good Friday. Uh, it's going to be a presentation through the eyes of the Blessed Mother. So I hope you can join us for that Friday right here at noon. Sunday Vespers, right? Sunday night evening prayer uh, is going to be discontinued for now. However, uh, you are invited to join us for morning prayer, 8 a.m. during the Triduum, since there are no morning masses or even noon uh, masses on Thursday, Friday, or Saturday. Uh, you can join, join us uh, in the, the chapel here for morning prayer at 8 a.m. Our next St. Gerald's Moms Fellowship is tomorrow night as we reflect on the fruits of the spirits, the fruit the fruits of the spirit and how they apply to motherhood. You can learn more on our website or in the bulletin. And our long-standing tradition here at St. Gerald, after Mass, uh, after the Palm Sunday Mass, there are caramel and frosted cinnamon rolls for sale in the Fellowship Hall, available for takeout only. Proceeds go to our St. Vincent de Paul Society in order to help uh, the poor in our zip code. So thank you for your generosity. Do have a holy, holy week. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen.